To close out the classic Thief trilogy, a bit ago I had the opportunity to finish Thief Deadly Shadows. Welcome to a Percurrent Game Review. I'm the Percurrent Gamer and in this video we'll be analyzing Thief Deadly Shadows. If you're new to the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button to see more amazing content on old school gaming titles. Now let's get started. Thief Deadly Shadows has a pretty unique history. Thief 2 The Metal Age did quite well at the time of its release in 2000, but for whatever reason, that success wasn't enough to keep Looking Glass Studios afloat, so the studio closed. Years later, in 2004, Ion Storm came into the picture and produced the final entry in the classic trilogy, Thief Deadly Shadows. Taffer. Yeah, go on then and run, Taffer. The plot does a good job of expounding upon the world without over-explaining things. It develops more lore around the different groups of people referenced throughout the series, such as the Keepers, Hammerites, Pagans, and City Folk. A plus to the narrative is the well-written mystery in the plot. I'm not going to spoil the details in this video, but say, the plot keeps the player guessing with some well-written twists and turns. The narrative also meshes together a lot of different genres without breaking continuity. There are aspects of horror, fantasy adventure, and espionage intertwined seamlessly. This really keeps the narrative feeling fresh throughout the whole game. Some other pluses are the villain and the growth around the protagonists. Of all the villains in the classic trilogy, Thief Deadly Shadows has the scariest one. As for the protagonist, Garrett has some progression without losing his persona. Like any plot, there are plenty of ways to nitpick it, but overall, the plot in Thief Deadly Shadows is really engaging. Aha! Ha! Tis like you have struck with a feather! Thief Deadly Shadows is an early 2000s game, which is a very interesting era. There were still a lot of retro games being produced, but new school boundaries were being pushed as well. Many games shot for the attributes expected in new school games and didn't quite do it as smooth as today's games, but set the foundation to be improved upon until now. It's clear that Thief Deadly Shadows comes from that era. Most of the issues come from bugs due to the game pushing the limits of the time towards more complicated design. For example, levels had more details in them, but those details often got in the way of movement. I always get stuck on stuff in this game. Had enough, I see. Stop your running, you coward! <sighs> Although Metal Age felt retro, it's simpler, and the plus is that it's on point when it comes to movement mechanics. Thief Deadly Shadows is the first time where that isn't the case in this series, and it feels like it is because of the more complicated approach to design. Jumping is the biggest movement issue. There's this weird glitch that occurs when jumping. I call it ghosting, and it happens all the time. When the player jumps and hits something awkwardly, they get stuck in this float mode. The player becomes completely silent, and they float around like a ghost. In this state, the player can't do anything but walk. Fortunately, it's it's easy to fix. If the player draws a bow and arrow, they will land and stop ghosting. However, it's a pretty annoying glitch. Gameplay heavily focuses on stealth and makes combat less of an option, which I'm okay with because that's the strong suit of the series. However, using items is more complex and that leads to another issue with the gameplay mechanics, some botched stealth action. For example, the blackjack. It's more complex to use in this game than previous installments in the series. In the other games in the series, it works as long as the enemy is not in alert mode. Deadly Shadows adds some more complexity to it by requiring the player to be positioned very specifically for it to work. Better be going. It seems like this intricacy was added to make the game more complex, as many games were going for in that era. However, it ends up feeling awkward because there are many times when it seems like the blackjack should have worked, but didn't. Oh my goodness. <laughs> This is a bit of a nitpick because once I figured out how they wanted the items to work, I was able to adapt and be successful at stealth. Sounds. Oh. Bees that. <clears throat> 
It just felt like a major adjustment going from Metal Age to Deadly Shadows. These issues seemed like they occurred because the game was trying to push the limits of the time and be more complex, but fell short. On the contrary, there are some really nice improvements to the gameplay. For example, the item interface. Instead of having to cycle through a bunch of items like in Metal Age, the game allows the player to click on key objects and the right key item is automatically used. It feels easier and more organic. For instance, lockpicking. Instead of memorizing a hotkey and cycling between items for lockpicking, like in Metal Age, the player can just hit the interact button and jump right into it. It's a nice optimization. There are a lot of other enhancements to the gameplay. For example, the economy system. The economy system felt more useful in Deadly Shadows compared to the other games in the trilogy. Basically, as long as the player has money, they can enter a shop and buy what they want. Additionally, items cross over between levels. As a result, I never felt like I didn't have the tools needed to get the job done, which happened in the previous games due to how the economy system worked worked. A new mechanic that enhanced the gameplay is the faction system. The choices of the player affect the factions in the game, and based on what the player does, they will either treat the player as a friend or enemy. Nothing new today, but still a nice addition. The faction system opens up the gameplay to have side objectives, which are nice too. In summary, where the gameplay struggles the most is the movement mechanic. There is also some awkwardness to the items, but once figured out, it becomes manageable. Other than that, the gameplay still delivers great stealth action. Plus, there are a few cool new things such as the item shops and factions. In general, Thief Deadly Shadows has good gameplay. Ha -ha. Hi, bees want your <laughs> The level design has a positive impact on the game as a whole. As mentioned previously, the plot meshes together aspects of horror, fantasy adventure, and espionage. The level design really helps this shine, by transitioning seamlessly between levels that emphasize each aspect. As a result, the levels are very diverse, but nicely interconnected due to the narrative. The horror-based levels stood out to me the most, as they heavily reminded me of great games like Amnesia and Resident Evil. The ability for the player to navigate the city is a great addition to the series. It's the main hub for accessing levels, shops, and side missions. A minor issue with the city is the need to constantly load sections of the map. Another issue is that the maps load exactly how they were when the player left them. So if the player exited the map with guards chasing them, as soon as they return the guards will still be there ready to chase the player. This is a bit annoying because it can be hours before the player returns to that area. Then if you're like me, you'll forget and get some nasty surprises along with some pretty precarious situations upon returning. The map resetting is a little annoying at first, but once figured out, it's not too bad. Although the map loading and resetting is a bit of a limitation, the city is a great size. It makes the game feel like an organic world and isn't so large that it's cumbersome to get around. The city also has a few side quests, but they aren't required and the game is the right scale. So, they never feel hard to get to or like tedious filler. Speaking of tedious filler, the loot objective returns to each level in Thief Deadly Shadows. That objective was a big reason why I dislike Thief Gold so much, but it's toned down in Deadly Shadows. As a result, it never felt tedious. In short, some excessive load screens and wonky map resetting led to a few frustrating situations. However, overall the level design is the right scale and very diverse, so the maps feel very engaging throughout the game. Replayability is pretty average. There isn't anything to unlock or any extra things that make replaying the game unique from the last playthrough. So, there's not much to say here. Thief Deadly Shadows has its failings, some buggy gameplay mechanics such as ghosting and a knack for getting stuck on things. The level design does have some noticeable limitations such as frequent loading needs and wonky resetting. On the other hand, the narrative is solid. There are some new additions to the gameplay that make Thief Deadly Shadows feel fluid, such as an easier to use item interface and economy. Lastly, the map designs are very diverse and engaging. After playing Thief Deadly Shadows and taking into account the game's pros and cons, I give it a solid 3 
stars out of four, which means it's a good game. Even with its problems, I'd highly recommend Thief Deadly Shadows. If you enjoy stealth action games, it's a must play in my opinion, and definitely an old school title worth checking out. Well, that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to hit that subscribe button to see more amazing content. Also, leave a comment. If you played Thief Deadly Shadows, how was it for you? Finally, check out some of my other content by clicking on one of the videos to the right. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.